we still have to work on emerging therapies. So before we end today's discussion, I'd like to highlight some of the emerging therapies we know about, and I'd like to go around and ask everyone about their, what they think is an emerging drug that physicians who are watching this can, can look towards for their patients. Dr. Ampaka. Well, I've been uh, personally involved uh, as a surgeon in a lot of the oncolytic immunotherapies uh, with uh, TVEC as well as with other agents such as Cavatac, which is a Coxsackie virus A21, and also HF10. And I think that what these oncolytic immunotherapies, what they provide uh, for patients is that we can inject them directly into the tumor, we can activate the immune system locally, but also develop an immune response locally that we hope then will have an effect also at distant sites. Um, to date, most of these oncolytic immunotherapies have been very well tolerated by patients. It also lends themselves to be used not only as monoth monotherapeutic agents, but also in combination with other agents that may have more toxicity. And we hope then to have a, uh, an increased uh, response rate with uh, those combinations. I think specifically for me, um, in patients that have earlier disease, the three Bs, three Cs, and stage four M1As, uh, these agents can be very effective at uh, treating that disease, both in the injected lesions as well as the, in the bystander, non-uninjected -in lesions. And uh, sort of as the field moves forward, I think these agents will also be then used earlier, patients that have resectable disease, but that we want to activate the immune system prior to that resection. And I think they really lend themselves very well for that um, in those patients. And, and the TVEC data showing a possible trend towards survival advantage and distant response, yes. possibly. Dr. Kaufman. Yeah, no, I would echo that. I think the oncolytic viruses are, are particularly interesting. Um, uh, they've been very well tolerated. In the recent uh, phase three trial of, of TVEC, which was a randomized uh, multi-institutional study, um, it did meet its primary endpoint, which was looking at a durable response rate, which is little bit of an unusual endpoint, but really uh, required patients to not only have an objective response, but to maintain it for at least six months. And so that was significant. And, um, you know, it's a fairly easy agent to deliver. Um, in subset analyses, we've also found that doing this uh, in first line and doing it in patients who had this unresectable stage three and the stage four M1As tended to do a little bit better. Um, in terms of both response rate and, and survival, which might really help to define the best patient population for this. I think for more advanced patients, the combinations, for example, combining with ipilimumab or PD-1 are probably going to be a better strategy to go with, with this. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Um, Joseph. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what's been said. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of excitement. Um, for the combination of a lot of different therapies. I, I, in particular, I, I like the idea of local therapy combined with systemic therapy. I've had, you know, unfortunately, several patients with um, metastatic as well as in transit disease where, where the, the metastatic disease lungs was clearing up, but those, the in transits were extremely stubborn. And, um, you know, w wish, I wish I had, you know, it's just sitting right there wanting you to treat it, right? So, so I think the TVEC uh, option or any other local agents is going to be really exciting. Um, outside of that, um, I'm also very interested in um, the whole slew of immune checkpoint inhibitors uh, or, or, or agonists, and for that matter, um, as we, everyone at hit this table knows, there's probably, a, 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 maybe not an infinite, but a very large numbers of, t of, of signals, of off and on signals for T cells, and we can manipulate each one of those either individually or combined, and there's, there's, there's you know, I can count at least five or ten uh, drugs that are coming out that, that can do that, and it'll be interesting to see, but A, how they work as a single agent, but then B, in combination. So oncolytics, newer checkpoint inhibitors, Dr. Pavlik? Well, I, I think one of the other new and exciting things that we've been exploring has been the conjugated drug antibodies. Um, again, trying to deliver a more targeted therapy to more visceral tumors, getting these antibodies to attach to tumors and delivering a toxic agent to the cell itself while minimizing the systemic effects can be very helpful. I think this is something that maybe the 
answer to what do we do with patients with BRAF wild type tumors who don't respond to the immunotherapies we have, this may be something that will hold some promise for them as well. Well, it's certainly been the answer in breast cancer. Yeah. Hopefully it's the answer in melanoma. For me, particularly, what we haven't gotten to is the adoptive T cell therapies, the ability to get those killer cells that are in tumors already, but are not enough, and take them and grow them ex vivo, grow them to billions of cells, and then infuse them back into our patients with an immune stimulant like interleukin-2. The field there has shown good response rates, durability of response, and some early data have shown possibly an increased benefit with checkpoint inhibitors. This therapy has somewhat been limited to certain specialized centers, but as we speak today, there are companies that are looking to try and commercialize this type of therapy somewhat like we've commercialized Provenge for prostate cancer where the tissue is sent out to a central area. Those T cells are grown up and then sent back to the hospital to the physician to infuse the patient locally. And as we end this discussion, I find it amazing that before some of these therapies were limited to specialized centers, but most of the therapies we're talking about today that we've talked about, whether they be the antibody drug conjugates, whether they be the checkpoint inhibitors or the oncolytic therapies, and even some forms of IL-2 are available in the community and will be available to patients.